Hi guys, it's Sarah from Book Nerds and Fangirls, and usually, like I do, I was planning something totally different for this video. I had planned to watch rewatch Legacy Season 1 and finally bring you guys my review for Legacy Season 1 because I really did enjoy Legacies. It was the only show I actually kept up with all year. <clears throat> But then something happened. Netflix dropped Crazy Ex-Girlfriend Season 4. 4 on me whenever uh, I got no uh, warning that Crazy Ex-Girlfriend Season 4 was going to be on there. I read an article about what's coming Netflix in April and Crazy Ex-Girlfriend was not mentioned in this article. <coughs> so it just dropped on me unexpectedly. And I had just barely, like, nine or ten episodes left to go in the whole entire series. So I decided, <clears throat> why not go ahead and binge watch it? I was up until, like, legitimately 5 a.m. in the morning last night. Last night, finishing the end of Crazy Ex-Girlfriend. So my opinion about it... I slept on it because, of course, it was 5 a.m. I didn't really have time to think about it. I wasn't, like, super dead tired. In fact, because of this ending, it made it to where I was wide awake and to where I almost stayed up until 6 a.m. in the morning. That was... <clears throat> this is the first time in a while I've actually pulled an all-nighter. I think the last time I pulled an all-nighter, I was in college. But, uh... Yeah, I ended up pulling an all-nighter to finish Crazy Ex-Girlfriend last night so I could bring to you this review tonight. <clears throat> Not tonight. It's the day. You see how tired I am? <clears throat> I'm kinda tired. I wanna relax today. But I really wanna get out this review for you guys. So today, we're gonna be discussing the finale of Crazy Ex-Girlfriend, and what I specifically thought about it. So seeing as how this is strictly about the finale, I'm not going to talk about season 4 as a whole, because the season was kind of meh to me, as most final seasons are, because they're trying to wrap up so many story points. Points that sometimes uh, getting those story points wrapped up is kind of like boring, but boring to us viewers. But in retrospect, it wasn't a horrible season. Season 3 is just ultimately my favorite season of Crazy Ex-Girlfriend. I don't think anything is going to top that. Well, of course, nothing's going to top it now because the series is over. Officially. Officially. So, because this is a major spoiler review of the final episode of Crazy Ex-Girlfriend... Girlfriend, I suggest that you watch that first. First, finish the series, and then come back to this video, and we could discuss it in full. But I also want to give out a warning that this is also potentially a rant review, because I still have a few issues of how Crazy Ex Girlfriend ended, and I would like to voice those issues, even though it is... Not everyone's favorite opinion about what, about how the f show ended. I'm gonna also put a disclaimer here, even though I really feel like we don't need one by this point. Point that this is just strictly my opinion. If you have a different opinion about the finale, that is fine. If you feel differently about any of the love interest on the show, that is fine. I just... I have my ship, and I have the way that I wanted it to end. And which, you know, it didn't end the way I thought it would end, but at the same time, I kind of figured they would go for this ending, specifically if you <clears throat> know the showrunners, and if you uh, know the writers, you could kind of sort of guess what ending they were going to go for from the get-go. <clears throat> Go and I am in no way, shape, or form saying that this ending was bad in any way. Wait, it was just kind of simply bittersweet for me. And I'm gonna explain why in the spoiler section. 
inspection, I just wanted to put out a disclaimer that if you loved this ending, that's great on you. <clears throat> on you, I'm glad it ended the way that you wanted it to. For everyone who is with me thinking that not liking this ending so much because they feel as if it was a cop-out or things like that. That is also a fine opinion. We could be civil to each other and have different opinions, and I just want to state that. State that. So if you want to know why I felt like the finale was kind of a cop-out and why I feel like they should have ended it differently, Stay tuned. Until then, if you've watched it and you don't want to go further to this point and you just wanted to hear, hear what I initially thought on it, uh, great. But at least, you know, there's fan fiction for everyone who didn't like the ending, including myself because I write fan fiction. I don't know if I've ever stated I write fanfiction on this channel. I think I've mentioned it once or twice. So I'm definitely going to be inspired to write fanfiction after this. After this ending. So if you guys have not seen the series finale of Crazy Ex-Girlfriend, I suggest you go do that. Come back to this video. Video. This is definitely a series worth watching. Despite the ending. The ending where I'm just like meh about it. I understand it, but I really didn't like it that much. That much, you know, kind of like that. I'm rambling. This is what happens when I get in rant mode. So, I'm gonna say goodbye to the non spoilerly people of this video. Have a nice day. Go watch Crazy Ex-Girlfriend, because despite the ending and me not particularly gelling with it well, you could... This show is an amazing show, and I don't know what I would have done without this show over the past four years. So go watch it. It's definitely worth the watch. The watch. But without further ado, let's get started with the possible rant. Okay, guys, now that the non-spoilery people of this video are gone, hopefully, if you've stuck around because you don't mind spoilers, that's great. Hello to you, too. But now that we've got past the initial part of this video where I was just talking in non-spoiler part, let's talk about the finale and how I feel like... I think it was a cop-out to have Rebecca not end up with any of the guys, the guys, and just leave it open-ended. Now, I have the same problem with books. I love ships. If people don't know me, hi, I'm Sarah. I love romance. I'm a hopeless romantic. Romantic. Oh, well, thinking women can be feminist while being in relationships. Uh, this ending to me, I felt like it was a tiny bit of a cop-out. I'm not gonna lie. Lie. I know there are people just, like, typing away on their keyboards going, Sarah, this is pot potentially one of the best endings ever. How come you did not like it? Like it? And I think it was precisely because I knew it was bound to happen bound to happen no matter what that I didn't like it. I feel like it was a very predictable ending for the series that she chose herself. Herself. And I really, like, as much as I love strong, opinionated women, women who don't need men to be happy, happy, I feel like you could come to that realization while being in a relationship as well. I get that Rebecca didn't want to be in a relationship, relationship because she would feel like she would lose herself and she would never find herself and she would never truly be happy and I get that. But the series flash forwards one year after she figures out this huge life changing decision for herself and yet it closes off off on sorry my cat is making noise. Hi Shady. But um it closes off with her saying, I don't know who I'm going to end up with. 
end up with. I would love to figure out out, but just because love is one part of your story, it doesn't mean that it's all of your story. And I really appreciate that ending, honestly. Honestly, I just don't really like the whole the whole uh, you are your true love ending ending. I just like I like things to be definite. I don't really like open ending endings. Endings. I guess it's just part of the whole, we have that all the time in real life, and while the show is very realistic, now I feel like it's not complete, if you say. If you say, I feel like it is very op open-ended, and the ending is meant to be, uh, to your interpretation about who she should end up with. And I feel like, you know, personally, being a part of the Rebecca and Nathaniel fandom, I feel very cheated about this ending. Ending more specifically because, yeah, the guys have a semi-happy ending, but the only one that is in a happy and healthy relationship at the end of this whole series is Josh. And if you watched my I have no clue what's making that noise. Sorry, guys. Guys, uh, I have, like, little clicking noises somewhere, and I'm just like, ill. But, um, is Josh. Now, if you watched my, uh, season one review for the series, I will link it down below. Down below. A lot of people picked up on the fact that I hated Josh for season one through three. I just didn't think he was that interesting of a love interest. I felt like he was very self-absorbed. Absorbed. And even in, like, the season four, four episodes, I really feel like Josh didn't really become a factor. A factor. I just feel, like, cheated <laughs> in a way. And I will explain why I felt cheated on this particular part. So, if a lot of you know, I am a huge fan of Nathaniel. I wanted him together for Becca, and it seemed like he was the only viable love interest to end up with her in the end. And then they did this 180 where they brought Greg back, and Greg was my second choice. I loved Greg of her, too. I actually liked her with anyone besides Josh. Honestly, I feel like her and Josh are better off as friends. I feel like he deserves to be happy with someone else. But I still think in the end it's bullshit that he's the only one in a relationship out of the three contenders because Nathaniel and Greg are so much better. Better for anyone than Josh is, in my personal opinion. Opinion, but I will say Josh did end up growing me in season four. I just really hated the whole he what Wasn't a factor in season three or four. We moved away from this whole Josh being a Rebecca Rebecca deal I liked that I liked how they were just forming a really badass friendship Friendship, and then they decided that they had to have this three date contender. And ooh, who will Rebecca choose? Like, big and fancy thing. <laughs> thing. And I don't get why they made Josh a factor in this. Josh is not a very awesome love interest to begin with. <laughs> to begin with, it feels like. I, I don't know if I'm the only one that feels this. It feels like it was kind of rushed rush their whole, oh, I just realized that I loved you whenever you're with someone else. I feel like that makes me so angry. That is one of my hugest pet peeves in shows, books, and movies is the guy who didn't know he loved the love interest until she was with someone else. I think that is very annoying. I don't really like that. Like that, so it's like, oh, hey, let's just throw Josh in at the possible last minute. 
last minute so we could have all these three guys fight for Rebecca. And I'm not saying there's nothing wrong with, you know, you know, all the guys competing for Rebecca's can affection because, you know, in life, I know people get a lot of shit for dating other people. Other people while dating anyone else, but no one Rebecca is not in a commander relationship with anyone in this show. In the show, so I like the idea of, you know, going on dates and seeing what is out there out there to offer. I liked that aspect because it's very realistic. Realistic. It's not like in high school where, you know, if you know, uh, it's frowned upon for anyone to go on multiple dates of multiple people, but I feel like, like, it's okay if you're not in a serious, I feel like people are gonna get mad at me for saying that, but it's like, if you're simply just dating around and seeing your options, then it's fine, but if you're in a committed relationship or you've defined the relationship, that's when it's not appropriate, but whenever there's no defining of the relationship and you're just going on dates to date people, people, then I see this being a very realistic portrayal of dating. Of dating, but at the same time, I feel like Nathaniel got really cheated out of being Rebecca's last love interest because they bought Craig back and they could have just not brought Craig back and just had her be with Nathaniel. Nathaniel, because I feel like Nathaniel is one of those constants of of love in her life. In her life, he didn't really... God. I'm trying to remember if he didn't. He didn't really, like, go off the handle when she and him weren't together. He always respected her decisions decisions he realized he fucked up pretty bad with her when he did fuck up fuck up he supported her a lot a lot he even sung her song for her whenever that one director didn't want their song to her song to be in there because he believed in her and her dream dream and he didn't find it stupid in any way shape or form or form and I just like I loved Nathaniel because no matter what relationship him and Rebecca had he always respected her and her space <laughs> Her space and all while having his own opinion about you know you know when is she ever gonna really give me a chance and I feel like Nathaniel never really got a chance to be boyfriend material for girl for Rebecca and I really didn't like that <laughs> like that I feel like Rebecca and Nathaniel ended a little too soon for my liking and they never really had the chance to be together. And I feel like that's why I got cheated out of the ending. I know a lot of the other ships are in the same boat. Like, if you love Josh and Rebecca, you're in the same boat. If you love Greg and Rebecca, you're in the same boat. I just feel like all of our ships just sunk like the Titanic in this last episode. And I feel like that's a cop-out in and itself because, like, the last episode, you have her date dating three really amazing guys who really deserve to find someone and you've gotten us to love all these relationships well except me I don't really like, like the Josh and Rebecca relationship but I can handle it handle it but in the end I feel like it is a cop-out not to have her end up with someone and to leave the ending to your own interpretation about who she ends up with. Obviously not Josh because he has love interest which bothers me in and itself because why can't Nathaniel or Greg also have a love interest? Love interest. I know not everyone needs a love interest to have a happy ending. 
ending. I just feel like this these relationships are the core of the show, but the real core of the show is Rachel Bloom as Rebecca. Rebecca, and we'll talk about character study in a minute. In a minute, I just, I really didn't like her not ending up with anyone. Anyone, not even implying that she may have a date with one of them later. Later, I don't know, I just, I just really feels very open-ended ended to me, and I really don't like open endings. I guess that's just what it is. What it is. Now, setting aside my personal feelings about the show's ending, ending, I really would love to talk about the fact that this show has the best character development of any characters I've seen. If, even if you look at the minor characters, where they started to where they end up now, like the recurring characters, you got Paula, who lived out her dream of becoming a real-life lawyer, and it was so great. You got Heather, who is just a super chill girl, owning her own business and freaking being married. Married. You got Valencia, who lived out her... Who all she wanted to do was get married, but she also is a very great wedding planner, and she found love in the most unexpected place while doing what she loved, and that's great. Great. You got Greg, who went to college and reopened his father's restaurant. You got Josh, who really just wanted the big, happy family. family, And while he doesn't really have that, have that now, Josh has really matured over the course of the series, and I'm amazed. He's still my least favorite character, but that's just my personal opinion. If you love Josh, that's great. Great. And then you got the two most changed characters of the series, which are, of course, Rebecca and Nathaniel. I feel like Nathaniel was just this daddy's boy who would do anything to gain his father's approval. He up and quitted his job. Job as a lawyer to do what he was passionate about. About, or he took a pause. I really can't remember the specific details, even though I just watched it last night. Last night. I just, like, I love how happy Nathaniel looks at the ending, even though he didn't end up with anyone. That's great. But the, I feel like, the of course, the best character development is, of course, Rebecca. Because we go for this girl who is so unhappy unhappy in her life. She doesn't love her job. She's obsessed with her ex-boyfriend. Ex-boyfriend. To this girl who doesn't need a guy to be happy, who is doing other doing what she loves with the amazing her amazing friends and her amazing group of people that she loves and cherishes cherishes a lot. So in this way, I feel like I could respect the ending, no matter how much I disagree with the ending. With the ending, I feel like it's potentially a good ending. If you like those sort of endings, I just really wish I knew who she ended up with. That That's just me and my shipness talking. Talking. I really love my ships, and I really love the whole comfort full circle of the love storyline, but I feel like ultimately Crazy Ex-Girlfriend is a, in itself, a love story about loving yourself. Yourself and putting yourself first no matter how difficult it can get. Get in life, I just like, I love that message and I feel like Crazy Ex-Girlfriend has very powerful message 
messages for today's youth and even for a 25 year old like me it really helped me go through all the stuff in my life in my life and I will cherish it cherish it but without further ado let's get in to my favorite songs of course people knew this is gonna be a section in this finale review because I do love crazy ex-girlfriends for its songs for people who don't know me I love musical theater theater and musical so whenever I found out there was a song Like CW was making a romantic comedy musical. I was like, how are they gonna do that? This is gonna be bullshit. It's gonna be bad. And then I ended up fall falling so in love with Crazy Ex-Girlfriend. Crazy Ex-Girlfriend and in songs. And I've done done ranking my favorite Crazy Ex-Girlfriends for I will leave all my Crazy Ex-Girlfriend content down below for you guys so you can see the evolution of my crazy ex-girlfriend journey. Journey, but for this one I picked my absolute favorite songs. Crazy Ex-Girlfriend has a whopping 145 songs in it. In its run and that's a lot of content to cover. So of course I just picked my absolute favorite ones. I sat down. I made very hard decisions about the songs that I personally love. Love and then of course in my last video someone asked me asked me to please describe why I love these songs and because there was just so much content together I didn't describe why I loved these songs. So we're gonna do that today. Okay, so of course the first song that I love, this is just in order of when they aired, is of course the very first episode, West Covina. I feel like this really set the tone of Crazy Ex-Girlfriend. It, it set the expectations of what this show was gonna be. It has stuck with me as a song for the four years that this show has been on. <laughs> on air. It was just like, it was a whole production and I just loved that about it. A lot of these answers might be vague and I will say sorry about that, but this video is already long so let's get to it. To it. The next song is a sexy getting ready song. I feel like this is a very realistic portrayal of what it's like to be a woman getting ready for a date or trying to be sexy and ultimately failing. Failing because a lot of things that girls do to get ready aren't sexy. Sexy and I feel like men have like this unrealistic viewpoint of everything that a woman do is sexy. Not everything that people do is sexy. Is sexy. And I love how realistic this song is, especially the whole waxing part and how awful it is to be a how much groom well I wouldn't say awful being a chick because I love being a girl, but how much grooming it really takes to be a girl. A girl and it's just to get ready for like one date. One date and like I love that realism trail. Uh, the next one I want I'm not sure you guys is feeling kind of naughty. I just like I love how fucked up the song is that's all I can say. <clears throat> About it I have friends of course of course, some of these songs I just like for their tone, and I'm just gonna say that straight out. So if I don't give a valid explanation for why I like it, please don't come at me at the comments. <coughs> the comments. The next one I'm gonna pick is Settle For Me. This is the first time I watched Santino Fen Fontoya sing. I was very nervous to hear the guy who played Han sing. <coughs> Thing. It was a. Uh... Like, uh, I'm losing my train of thought. Sorry, guys. It was a very funny song. I really love the line if 
He's your broken Gundam. I'm your plan B. That is like the best line ever. I feel like Greg's songs songs in the first part of Crazy Ex-Girlfriend were just the best Greg songs in the world. I'm leaving out all the new Greg songs. Greg songs because well, I don't mind Skylar Austin, I believe his name is. He wasn't my Greg and that's okay. <laughs> okay, a lot of people liked him. I just personally, mm, it was okay. He was okay. And the next one is Sex of a Stranger. I just feel like this is a very hilarious song. I'm a good person, of course. It's very, uh, I love how she contradicts herself in this song, like saying, look at all the great things I'm doing, but at the same time, I'm being a shitty person. <clears throat> shitty person, and I'm just, you know, doing all these good things to be, to get back at you, and, you know, that was a good one. What will it be, I love Santino Fun Toys rendition of this one rendition of this one. I love the piano. I just think I love Santino Funtoya as a singer in general. General, I'm very sorry. Sad that he didn't come back to Crazy Ass Girlfriend for any of the finale, including the live concert that they had. It made me sad. <laughs> I wish he would have at least graced us of his presence at least one episode of Crazy Ex-Girlfriend in the last season, but it's okay that he didn't. I get it. His jazz is preferred. I just love the jazzy feel of this one. I feel like this is one of Paula's best songs in Crazy Ex-Girlfriend, to be honest. Honest. Where's the bathroom? This one was hilarious. It's just kind of like... Very realistic about what it's like to deal with family and the whole overbearing mother thing. And I just, I loved the song. The song, Jab Battle, I loved the fact that it was copying American rap battle. And of course they were spitting mad flow in this one and mad insults and I just loved it. Loved it. The next one I'm gonna do is Getting By. This is actually one of my favorite songs by Daryl. Daryl and one of his favorite songs too, according to the Crazy Ex-Girlfriend live concert. Where they sang most of their songs. I just feel like it's a very realistic song about being bisexual. Bisexual, and it's just like, I loved it. Uh, Dream Ghost, I love this one because this is the first time we ever really heard Dr. Akopian sing. Sing the show. Also, this also contains Amber Riley from Glee. Glee in it, so of course it's gonna be on my list. On my list. This one is one of my all-time favorite songs in Crazy Ex-Girlfriend, and that's I Gave You a UTI. Santino just nailed the comedy aspect of this one, all while singing, singing and acting at the same time, and I just, I fucking loved it. Loved it. This is, like, the example of one of the most perfect songs on Crazy Ex-Girlfriend because, you know, it's lighthearted and funny and also deals with a real-life issue that most women will understand. I'm pretty sure a lot of us have had urinary tract infections, even when we don't mean to, because it's a very realistic thing that women go through, and also men. Men could also get urinary tract infections as well. As well, they just call it Jockage. Jockage, but I just loved that song. It was so hilarious. Hilarious. Oh my god, I think I like you. I like this one because Rebecca finally figures out that she actually has feelings for Greg. Greg, and of course, season one, being the fangirl I was, wanted Greg and Rebecca to be together because there was no Nathaniel yet, so... There's that. Um, Greg's drinking song. I feel like this is a very realistic portrayal of how far someone can go when they're drinking. To drink. Drinking. They do it in a very lighthearted way that's also very serious. 
serious. Uh, it was a shit show. Um, I liked it because, you know, it brought real realisticness to Greg and Rebecca's relationship. How we romanticize their relationships, but in real life, I feel like these two wouldn't work out. Work out. So that one was good. Good. Oh, I forgot about Ping Pong Girl. This is one of the very few Josh songs I like. I like, and it was just so, so random, and it's copying five seconds of summer, so I appreciated that one. We tapped that ass, of course, it's just about, like, Rebecca being down on herself, but at the same time, it's got very hilarious lines in it, so, and it also features, like, Greg and Josh in it, too. Two and it's one of the very last times we see Greg on the show. On the show, like Santino on the show, so of course. I liked it. Stuck in the bathroom. This one was hilarious. I feel like this is one of the best Heather songs, and it's very underappreciated. For a Heather song, and like. I just love like the hilariousness of it. It's a very short song. It happens when Paula is stuck in the bathroom and it's just like great. <laughs> great. Uh, research me obsessively. I feel like this is a very great song because it deals with a very realistic issue which is online stalking. Stalking, but of course, you know, I love Crazy High School because they bring realistic issues and make them in a way that a lot of people can understand them. Understand them and like uh, it also helps that Britney Snow also sings this song. Song Duh, which is one of Josh's also. I really liked how this is a turning point for Josh. Josh about what a fucking idiot he <laughs> was for letting Rebecca go. I really liked and appreciated that one. The Santa Ana wins, I just really love. Love the, uh, um, yeah, the show? Minutes that goes into that one? I know that's not a real word. Don't add me at the comments. But I really liked that one. That one, and of course, without the Santa Ana wins, there wouldn't be this next song, which is Let's Have Intercourse. This is one of my favorite Nathaniel songs. Actually, it's not one of my favorites. It is my favorite Nathaniel song. Song, because it was just, like, so random, and it was the first time I ever really noticed that the guy who played that Nathaniel and Rebecca had chemistry. This was... When Rebecca and Nathaniel became, like, my sort of ship, like, I'm all like, oh, I could ship it. Ship it. And then what happened in the season two finale with her dad? With her dad. Uh, I really liked this song. The song for that specific reason. Now moving on to season three songs. Songs. I got Strip Away My Conscience, which is Rebecca trying to persuade Nathaniel into getting revenge on Josh. On Josh by being together. I just, I loved this episode in general. This is one of my favorite Crazy Ex Girlfriend episodes. Actually, it's not even one, it's my favorite Crazy Ex Girlfriend episode. Because, <laughs> like, the storyline hit well was great, the songs were great, this was everything I wanted Crazy Ex Girlfriend to be. And more, and this is one of my favorite episodes. And it had my favorite songs in it, so. So I just love them. When we're nearing the end, my favorite song list, guys, I can't believe it. The next one is the buzzing from the bathroom. The bathroom, this takes one of the lesser known characters, Tim. Tim and gives him a song and it's just like, it's the best song because it's him realizing that he never truly gave his wife an orgasm. 
orgasm and it was just like it was hilarious like if you haven't watched the buzzing from the bathroom I just loved it my next song is after everything you made me do that you didn't ask for I love this song because Rebecca finally stands up to Josh she finally tells him how she feels she finally admits everything to him and it's in a very hilarious way way and I just love Rebecca realizing that Josh is just this major dick dick to her even though you know it does set her up up for finding out that she does have BPD D. I found this song truly hilarious and I loved it. So the next song I have is the very first penis I saw. This is one of Paula's most hilarious songs, in my opinion. Opinion is very realistic about, you know, you know, the first time you have sex and like the first like very sexual awakening that you ever really have and it's just it's great. I laughed my ass off. My friend laughed her ass off on this one. This one. The next one I have here is Back in Action. I just love the Paula and Rebecca dynamic in this one. In this one, and like, it was just so great. Uh, trapped in a car that with someone you don't want to be trapped in a car with. With, I like the whole whole 80s vibe on this on the 78 70s 80s somewhere around this vibe on this I want to say it's Beach Boys don't get me wrong if it's not Beach Boys don't come at me if it's not Beach Boys but I love the whole Beach Boy vibe of this one this one Next one I'm gonna do is Hello Nice to Meet You. This is the only song by the new Greg that I actually really appreciated. Cause it's like reintroducing yourself to someone who you feel like fucked you over a lot. Uh, and I feel like it was really great point on the Greg and Rebecca relationship. I feel like it should have just like ended there of them being friends, but of course I'm biased on that, so so the next one we have is Hungry Vagina Metaphors. I just feel like this episode was one of the best of season four. Besides the second to the last episode, I feel like that's a very great episode. Episode. I just love these because they're funny. Funny. Next up, I got Funky Cat. Like, the timing for this one is just perfect. This whole episode deals with Rebecca having an out of control urinary tract infection, which turns into BV, which is bacterial vaginitis, I believe. I believe she ended up having, which, you know, I, I just loved this episode. It was just like a hilarious episode all around, and why. I real, really loved Crazy Ex-Girlfriend. And then finally, last but not least, the song that... The last song I ended up loving is Real Life Fighting is Awkward. I love the whole, whole uh, rendition of Eye of the Tiger in this one. This one, how they set up epic fights through cinematic history with just, you know... Josh and Greg's fighting, and Daniel's just being like, whoa, you guys are acting kind of ridiculous in the background. That background, and I love how it really shows that real life fighting is not like movie and TV show fighting. It was just great. It made me laugh so hard to where I actually put this on my Snapchat story last night. Last night, and I really enjoyed it. But there you guys have it. That was my thoughts and feelings about Crazy at School of Friend Finale. And of course, I'm going to end up with a high note. High note. And of course, I, if I cry, I did that on my Vampire Diary series finale too. Because this show has just meant 
so much to me over the past four years. It I find it very rare that I connect with a show as much as I do Vampire Diaries and Crazy Ex-Girlfriend. Ex-Girlfriend, it just really stops and gives me a moment to find, to truly appreciate the shows that make my life meaningful and I love them so much. <laughs> So much, they're my precious babies. I have loved being on this crazy journey of Rebecca's life. I've loved going on the journey with her, and I loved, even though I don't really agree with the ending, I could respect the ending as well. As well, and I appreciate you guys for sticking with me on all the crazy ex-girlfriend stuff, even though I only made, like, possibly five videos about it. <laughs> about it, I just feel very invested in this show, and I loved it so much. So much. It was a very important part of my life, and I'm sad to see it go. And I look forward to seeing this whole, these whole, all these casts in their next projects because this is definitely one of my favorite cast casts of all time. Besides Vampire Diaries, well, yeah, you guys know how much I love Vampire Diaries too. I've got to sneak that in there. So thank you for the memories. The memories, thank you for being one of the most amazing shows out there. Out there, and I really look forward to sharing this show. The show with so many people in the future, because I feel like it was a very underrated show. Show, and I'm very sad it's over. But without further ado, guys, that was everything about the crazy ass girlfriend finale, how I felt, my favorite songs, how I felt like it came together as a whole. I know this review was very jumbled up. <laughs> up and kind of like a little bit ranty, but this is my show and I love my show. My show, and even if it didn't end the way I actually wanted it to, it was still a great show overall, and there's always fan fiction. So I will see you guys in my next video, which will definitely be Legacies, because I am going to sit down and rewatch Legacies so I could give you the whole Legacies review. <laughs> Review, I feel like this is going to be the last show that Julie Plug does in the Vampire Diaries universe, and I'm very sad about it. But I also look forward to when this show has its eventual ending. <laughs> ending, so I could talk to you guys about how everything came full circle for this, this series as a whole. But... I love you guys. I appreciate you guys. Comment down below, like this video, subscribe if you like what you see. See, I try to make videos when I can. I'm sorry, I'm not very consistent with my scheduling. Scheduling, I'm just trying to give you guys good content. Good content that I really hope you appreciate appreciate, but I think this is all I'm going to say for now. I will see you guys in my Legacies video. Video, look forward to that. Look forward to my Pet Cemetery movie versus movie review. I'm excited for that one. That one, and I will see you guys in the next video.